Yo, so apparently there was this massive, massive leak. These are some documents that came out from the FTC hearing where the it was basically the FTC versus Microsoft case. A bunch of leaks came out and it's basically their entire roadmap from now, actually it's from a few years ago, all the way to 2030. There's all kinds of crazy stuff, including new console, next gen stuff, new controllers, what they had planned on being the release dates of, of new games. They had Starfield being planned for release in 2021 even. So a whole bunch of different stuff. I don't really know anything about it, but we're gonna get into it. So leave a comment, let me know what you think. Like the video, subscribe, turn on your notifications, whatever you wanna do. But either way, hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, so apparently there was this massive leak from the FTC versus Microsoft case, which was all about the acquisition of Activision Blizzard King. So this whole thing's been going on. Basically, Microsoft's been trying to buy Activision. There's been like this, this back and forth, whatever. It's been going on for like a year, I guess, almost. And these are a bunch of documents that were uploaded to the FTC. And at some point or another, there, there was some sort of break in the transfer of documents that it was not properly protected. And it looks like it's just gotten leaked. So. These are the highlights. Full timelines of Xbox's plan from now until 2030. Xbox is trying to buy Nintendo, or at some point they were trying to buy Nintendo, possibly Warner Brothers, Valve, and more. An Xbox handheld with a picture of it. Mid-gen and next-gen Xbox dates, 2025 and 2028 with pictures. Next Xbox controller, codenamed Sabeel, coming May 2024. Oblivion and Fallout 3 remasters and remakes. Red Dead Redemption 2 for next-gen. Xbox Cloud Console. The next Series S, codenamed Elwood. They're really terrible with their names, aren't they? Oh, hold on, I have a phone call real quick. Give me a second. Hey, quick question. You guys got rid of those documents, right? Right. <laughs> next Series S, codename Elwood. Next Series X, codename Brooklyn, for October and November 2025. Indiana Jones is coming soon, whatever that means. Dishonored 3. Next Doom game. Elder Scrolls 6 was originally planned for 2024. Ghostwire Tokyo 2. Shooting for 100 million Game Pass subscribers in the next eight years or less. Uh, there's a new Elite controller in the plans. There's a premium controller in the plans, which is better than standard, but worse than the Elite. An upgraded cloud gaming server blade. A Series X version codenamed Uther, and much more. Interesting. I guess this is, this is everything. I mean, just off the cuff, is this one of the biggest, like, gaming leaks in forever? Wait, am I gonna get in trouble looking at this? Dude, oh, dude, there is, dude, this is a whole damn PowerPoint. Roadmap to 2030. Update on GLT devices, vision, and roadmap. Deep dive into mid-gen portfolio. Inform on current gaps to 2033 goal, 20, 2030, 2033, 2030 goals. Feedback to inform prioritization. Consoles are considered a key health meter for the brand and will continue to drive majority of revenue and subscribers. The new Xbox controller is the only thing you need to play on every device. You know what? I love the PS5 controller, but they have a really good point with this. The Xbox controller is actually it's BIS. And the reason why it's because, I mean, it's Microsoft. They own Windows. So the compatibility with Windows, it's, it's so much better. It is it just, things just kind of work with the Xbox controller. Your documents got leaked too. What is this? S-Fan TV leaks from now to 2030. Going live late, tech issues, healing full body injuries, promising new 15 year sub badge, blowing it in the playoffs from Madden 25 to 30, visiting Bonnie at nursing home, clicking Spider-Man spank videos and complaining about random shit. Okay, I don't know how those emails leaked. Our vision, develop a next generation hybrid game platform capable of leveraging the combined power of the client and cloud to deliver deeper immersion and entirely new classes of game experiences. Optimized for real-time gameplay and creators, we will enable new levels of performance beyond the capabilities of the client hardware alone. Next gen direct X ray tracing, dynamic global illumination, ooh, micro polygon rendering optimizations, machine learning based super resolution, extensibility model for faster iteration and innovation, lacking thin operating system for for less than 99 the OS is operating system lacking thin OS for less than $99 consumer handheld devices. Oh, oh no, it's saying a thi okay, yeah, okay, I see what it's saying. Well, this is what they want to do, and this is what they've been trying to do since just about Windows 8. Since Windows 8, Microsoft has been trying to have this thing where hey, everything is Windows, the phone is Windows, the computer is Windows, the console is Windows. So, yeah, I think that's what they're talking about here. Each generation of Xbox has also brought new innovations to Microsoft. Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox Series XS. You know why they call it the Series XS? It's because if you have one, it's, you probably don't need it. <laughs> it's, the, it's the console you really don't need. <laughs> 
like I want Xbox to be good so bad. I know, like I'm, I'm joking, but like, man, I, I really do want Xbox to be good. Cohesive hybrid compute, cloud to edge architecture across silicon, graphics and OS enabling ubiquitous play. AI and machine learning enablement, creator platform, open and extensible game and immersive app development platform. Next generation gaming powered by AI and ML. Game performance, super resolution, deep neural network, frame rate interpolation, xCloud latency compensation. If they can actually fix cloud latency, they'd be unstoppable. Well, that's, is that the biggest problem with cloud gaming? I think that's really what it comes down to. Well, there's two, having to be online. Now we forget because we're online, we're terminally online all the time. There are people out there who wanna plug their game in and play without having to be connected to the internet. Whenever you hit a point where you're, you wanna play a game, and there's no internet, you realize like how much of a, of a problem it is whenever you don't have signal or you don't have internet service or something and you're trying to play a game that requires you to play it even if it's single player. Title release schedule. Okay, so this is from 20, 21, 20. So we're, we're, I mean, we're here, right? Doom Eternal, Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> 21, Starfield was supposed to release in 21. So this is all pre-COVID, seeing as how it's like 2020. This is all like pre-COVID projections, right? Like COVID basically nuked everything. So Elder, Elder Scrolls 6 originally was for 24. Fallout 3 Remaster was for 24. We already kind of know this stuff. We already looked at this earlier. Xbox Gaming Today. You can play on browser, mobile, smart TVs, low-end to mid-PC. Cloud device, consoles, high-end PC, Cloud Blade. And then these are your, your I guess, peripherals. Xbox Gaming Beyond. So this is what they want to work to, is higher resolution images for one, which is all this, plus handheld, plus cloud device, plus a one-handed controller, a mobile controller. This looks like a Nintendo Switch. So one-handed controller and mobile controller looks very similar to like Joy-Cons, actually. They want to add the premium controller, and then they also want to add a gaming keyboard and a mouse. Brooklyn Xbox Series S Reef Series X refresh. The most powerful Xbox ever, now adorably all digital. This will deliver 4K Gen 9 console gaming with more internal storage, faster Wi-Fi, reduced power, a more immersive controller, and a beautiful redesign that elevates the all digital experience of the Xbox ecosystem. This is a cylinder. This isn't a box. This looks like one of those trash cans with a little <laughs> the foot pedal and then the door lifts up. <laughs> beautiful and innovative new design more internal storage for games two terabytes nice usb-c front port with power delivery same great price okay the elwood the series s refresh best value in next gen gaming once again undisputed same low price 299 one terabyte internal storage updated to wi-fi 6e radio for better throughput latency and interference mitigation you want to hear my base take there should not be wi-fi in consoles ever and don't promote this degenerate behavior of playing online games with Wi-Fi. Just buy a $10 ethernet cable, okay? No, I'm being facetious, I'm joking. But guys, come on, buy like, just buy an ethernet cable, damn it, come on. <laughs> I don't have access to ethernet for my room. Just buy a house, I don't know. <laughs> buy a new house. This is the Sabeel, this is the new controller. I mean, this looks pretty similar to the current Xbox controller, but it looks like they, you know, they, they added, these looks like little grips. I don't like how it looks. I mean, everything else about this is pretty cool, right? It's like, it's got built-in modular sticks. And I mean, the Xbox controller is very nice, right? They added haptic feedback, accelerometer. Wait, accelerometer? So if I do this, like it's gonna know, but I, I don't like how it looks. I, I don't I don't know, it just looks like kind of, eh. Okay, so these are the two new consoles. The path to leadership in gaming. Smart TV app, universal wireless controller, mid-gen consoles, cloud-first gamers, PC-first gamers, console-first multi-device gamers, right? So this is like their path to leadership in gaming. So what this graph is saying is that the, the their bread and butter is always gonna be console gamers. And they think that as time goes on, there's like, this is going to be like the key, right? But as time goes on, this is eventually gonna hit a point where the delta is gonna become smaller, right? And people are gonna be like, okay, and it's starting to flatline a little bit, right? You can see that. I mean, I think they said they were planning on next generation coming out 2028. Oh, they think the PC gaming audience isn't really gonna change much. But then they think people that are cloud gaming is gonna go way up. And there's gonna be a lot of people that are, I guess what they mean by cloud first gamers is if they have the option, if they have the choice, if they can just stream a game instead of having a game like downloaded and playing on a console or like on, on these different devices or on their PC, they're gonna do that. I think this projection, I don't think this is, this is super far off the mark. I think right now there is not a whole lot of people that are cloud gaming because of the problems with cloud gaming. And I think that as far as like PC gaming goes, I think the percentage wise of like the total amount of people playing games, I feel like it's going to keep that same sort of ratio. I think it's probably going to stay roughly the same. Cloud gaming is already more popular than people think it is. 
Maybe. I get the feeling one of Xbox's long-term goals is waiting for mobile gaming to catch up with console fidelity, which at that point would make Game Pass infinitely more successful in other markets, especially Asia and... So yeah. Yeah. 100%. Mid-gen goals. Delight players, enable creators, and unlock ubiquity. Address customer feedback, increase storage on Series S, rechargeable slash removable controller battery, XDL for consoles, updated controller with increased immersion, direct to cloud controller for enable richer gaming experiences. Wait, direct to cloud controller? Dude, hold on, maybe that's their solution. Their solution to the latency is by instead of having your controller connect to the console, your controller connects to the cloud. Amazon and Google failed at this already. Chat, Amazon and Google are not Phil Spencer. Okay, so it's gonna be different. That does not remove the latency issue with cloud gaming, but maybe, maybe it does. Or maybe it, maybe it helps it. I don't know. So you have all these links in the chain, right? So with all these links in the chain, latency is additive to where it's like, okay, well, this device goes to this device, goes to this device, goes to the internet, goes to this, goes to this, goes to this, right? So maybe what they're trying to do is, well, like, let's, let's just remove this one part of the chain and make the chain smaller. So maybe it doesn't 100% fix the problem, but maybe what it does is it just takes away some of the some of the things that add to it. You're correct. It does take out the processing of the Xbox, which might add a few milliseconds. Yeah, like I don't think it'll fix it, fix it. It certainly can't hurt, right? Uh, maintain technology, leadership, and innovation. All new Series X design, all digital ecosystem, and up to 80% reduced power and standby. Wi-Fi 6E for faster downloads. That's actually kind of wild. How much how much power does the uh, Xbox use in standby right now? Tree Fitty? What's Tree Fitty minus 80%? 1.21 gigawatts? <laughs> Great, Scott! The voice of the player. Loving the new storage option. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what is this? This is a re reviews from who? The, what is this? What is this? What is this panel? No, I think this is like the voice of the player. I think what they what they meant in this panel of, of the deck is like, they were like, okay, this is what we want players to say. You know, this is what we're hoping that the, 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 the feedback is. That's like the target feedback, I'm assuming. So be a launch, $69.99. Oh, okay. So it's not like ridiculous. I mean, I think controllers are too expensive. Controllers are way the hell more expensive than they should be. Now I understand inflation and all that, right? The number in my brain growing up was like a controller is $20. And then now all of a sudden controllers are like 60, 70 bucks. Like 50 should be like, unless you're getting like a special edition, like elite, whatever. I think they should be roughly 40. Okay, so uh, again, for the launch timetables, this is for the new versions of the Xboxes, the Elwood and the Brooklyn. They want to have a 60 plus day separation between launches to enable dialogue with different audiences. It allows us to focus on the new improvements and Sabeel tell stories beyond console. Uh, DTC, what is DTC? D direct to cloud. Starkville end of life ahead of Brooklyn launch. Brooklyn arrives just in time for the gifting season, but separate from Elwood, okay? Mid-gen devices lineup, delivering on player needs. Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, okay, so this is all the, these are the specs essentially. 10 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM here for the Series X and XDL, uh, GPTF, target res, 4K, 4K, 1440p, all digital for the content, no no disk drives, all digital. The Series S has no USB-C, these are pretty much the same. Oh, the Brooklyn versus the Uther that we talked about earlier. But what is the difference here? These are all the same. I'm not seeing anything different. It's just the form factor, yeah, maybe. Current gaps in fiscal year 23 to reach 2030 goals. So this is what's funded. Cloud console, gen 10 investigations, mid-gen consoles, wireless headset, core controller, SW security, Xbox design, not currently funded, elite controller, Actium, luxury control, ooh, a luxury controller, the Xerasi, console customization via XDL, PC accessories, accessibility portfolio, new cloud server blades, repairability, sustainability progress, and an audio portfolio expansion, not in scope for first party. Earbuds, a media remote, mobile controller, and a handheld. Okay, so this is basically like, okay, we're ready to go with these. These are things we, we think we can do, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. These are the ones that are like, hey, this is what we really wanna do. That's like the light at the end of the tunnel. Going real in depth with this, this feels like one of my daily useless meetings where people read every word in the presentation. Dude, you know what's crazy is like, looking at this makes me feel like I'm looking at like a deck, like a marketing deck. So yeah, man, th these Xbox leaks are kind of wild, man. Check the email, wait. Okay, apparently this is the leaked email. This is from 2020. Why would they upload this? Anyway, let's let's see. Maybe maybe it'll explain itself. This is from Phil Spencer to Chris Capicella and Take Takeshi Numoto. Is that right? Takeshi, I totally agree that Nintendo is the prime asset for us in gaming today. And today, gaming is our most likely path to consumer relevance. I've had numerous conversations with the LT 
of Nintendo about tighter collaboration and feel like if any US company would have a chance with Nintendo, we are probably in the best position. The unfortunate or fortunate for Nintendo situation is that Nintendo is sitting on a big pile of cash. <laughs> they have a BOD that until recently has not pushed for further increases in market growth or stock appreciation. I say until recently as our former MSBOD member Value Act has been heavily acquiring shares of Nintendo and I've kept in touch with Mason Morfit, it's likely he will be pushing for more from Nintendo stock which could create opportunities for us. Without that catalyst, I don't see an angle to a near term mutually agreeable merger of Nintendo and Microsoft and I don't think a hostile action would be a good move, so we are playing the long game. But our BOD has seen the full write-up on Nintendo and Valve, and they are fully supportive on either if opportunity arises, as am I. Yeah, BOD is, uh, is, is BOD Board of Directors? That's what I was assuming. I should have said that. We have two fairly active M&A discussions in gaming right now, Warner Brothers Interactive and ZeniMax. I took ZeniMax to the BOD last week, to the Board of Directors last week, and prior to the BOD discussion, ZeniMax sounds like a like a medicine. ZeniMax sounds like penis enlargement pills. <laughs> anyway, I took ZeniMax the last week. <laughs> I took ZeniMax to the board of directors last week, and prior to the board of directors discussion, I asked Amy and uh, Sadia if they want me to slow either or both of these, given the TikTok discussions. And they both emphatic emphatically told me, no, what is TikTok discussions? They're fine doing all three of these if the deals make sense. I won't say WB or Zenny is Nintendo, but both are for sale and gettable by us if things align. Biggest obstacle in WB is the IP ownership. We wouldn't own any of the IP, which hurts long-term flexibility. And the only obstacle on Zenny is valuation expectations of founders. But I think it's likely one or both of these happen, which help us continue to double down on our gaming relevance. To give a sense of scale, Zenny Max is about the size of our current first party studios org. So that would be doubling our content asset. Downside is it's more core, less broad, not mobile, and more North American, European, etc. I love this discussion and value you looking at the opportunities here. At some point, getting Nintendo would be a career moment. And I honestly believe a good move for both companies. It's just taking a long time for Nintendo to see that their future exists off their own hardware. A long time, Phil. So uh, I saw somebody in chat say Zenimax. Zenimax is Bethesda. Is that right? Mm, okay, so it's like the parent. It's the parent company of Bethesda. Interesting. Interesting. And then I mean, and th that happened. Interesting. I mean, how would you get? Let's say, let's say a world where where Microsoft owns Nintendo. Good or bad? I see a lot of people saying bad. Monopolies are t typically not good. <laughs> I think I think that's fair to say. I will say this though, he is not wrong. It's taken a long time for Nintendo to see that their future exists off of their own hardware. That statement is not wrong because Nintendo's hardware blows ass. I think there could be some good that comes out of it. Like imagine if, if uh, Nintendo also does some bullshit, man. Nintendo does some real, everybody knows Nintendo does some bullshit. And I feel like Microsoft would be more likely to just be like, yeah, we want people to play the games, right? And they would just redistribute it like a hundred times. Would it be overall good or overall bad? I really don't know. Will it, will it ever happen? Probably not. Okay, this is another email from Satya Nadella to Phil Spencer, Amy Hood. Uh, this is really great to hear, Phil. Neither of us have announced pricing, right? Even as I type this, I know I shouldn't, but I can't help myself. <laughs> We've all lived with seven years of starting off a generation with a price and performance and messaging disadvantage to, X to PS4 and Xbox One. I have to admit, this morning when I woke up knowing the PS5 reveal was today, that the stress level was higher than normal. Now, after almost 12 hours of soaking in their unveil, taking apart their specs and looking at the community responses, I just want to say that I'm proud of our team. We have a better product than Sony does, not just on hardware, but equally important, important on the software platform and services on top of the hardware. We have the ingredients of a winning plan. I felt the feedback from the uh, BOD board of directors discussion on being too confident and maybe this will just reinforce that perception. I get the need to be humbly confident, but today was a good day for us. We haven't won anything and I know we have a hard discussion about pricing, P&L, uh, investments, etc. This mail isn't trying to scoop any of that. Those discussions really matter, but we can take confidence in our product truth here and I do believe any conversation needs to start believing in that. This was a good day for Xbox. That's funny. That was in 2020. You know what, dude? I feel like from a software perspective, in the past, I owned a PS2, but I felt like the Xbox was better than the PS2. I felt like the 360 was better than the PS3 from a software perspective. And I felt like the Xbox One to PS4, I thought the gap was, was 
I thought they were like neck and neck. The real problem that Xbox has versus PlayStation is the exclusives. If there were no exclusives, I think PS5 still would have won. You guys don't think so? I think that globally, if there were no exclusive, I, I think the PS5 would have probably won out. Oh, because of Game Pass? Um, whenever I talk about exclusives, I would consider Game Pass to be an exclusive because it's an exclusive service. No, hold on, hold on. At that point, now you're going back to talking about like, is Game Pass software or is it a service? And let's say if both of them had the same service, but this one clearly doesn't have that service, so it doesn't matter. So it's not really part of the discussion. It's a service, but it's an exclusive service. Frick, now I'm confusing myself. PlayStation Plus is nice too. Play, well, true, PlayStation has PlayStation Plus. I think most people would agree Game Pass is better than PlayStation Plus, right? But the games on PlayStation Plus are bangers. But is that not because of the exclusives that we're talking about? Dude, taking taking exclusives out of the discussion, because I'm, I'm trying to build this world where you take exclusives out of the discussion and it actually makes it so much harder. There's so many different parts to it whenever it comes to like talking about exclusives. There's so many different factors and so many different parts. It muddies the conversation a lot. So I originally said that I think the PS5 still wins out if you were to take exclusives out of the equation. But maybe that's not the case. I don't know what to think about that one, actually. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys are now educated because I'm not. So I'm ho I hope somebody else is. Leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, do all that stuff. YouTube, Instagram, Discord, everything is SFAN TV. I do the, the highest variety. I, look, we're not even variety streamers anymore. We're versatility streamers. I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys next time. Free.